Hello. Have a really great afternoon. I'm here talking to you from Germany, but uh, the background is basically my normal office. I am an adventure photographer testing cameras inside active volcanoes as a Canon ambassador. So thank you very much for Canon to make it possible that I'm here now and talking to you. And thanks to you all for sending in your images because we did an announcement. We were asking for uh, images to post on Instagram with the hashtag #BildeKritikMetUla. I hope I pronounced this correct. So I have several images to you on Instagram which I would love to review. And at the same time, we have the chat. So um, I just quickly say hello to you in the chat and uh, hopefully you can see my message. So I'll be, I would be very happy if you have questions, just post them in the chat or say hello to me so I don't feel that alone. So please may, leave me a little comment in your chat and also, Make sure you say hello if I talk about your image, because we have over 40 images on Instagram, which I picked and where we will go through and uh, where I would love to tell you a bit more about them, why I like them. Nobody says hello to me in the chat. Huh? What's that? I have to write in the YouTube video. Oh, OK, not in the chat from the Zoom. Uh, dear Thomas, Thomas is my voice in the background. Um, maybe you could read me or post me in the chat some of the comments if I see them on YouTube or uh, post the YouTube link to me and then I will simultaneously try to watch your questions on the YouTube. Would that work? Okay. So Thomas says yes. Thomas says, yes, here I have the YouTube link and then I can read your comments. Because honestly, normally I'm in the jungle by myself, completely alone or inside active volcanoes testing equipment. Work. But the thing is that now um, I'm online and I have to deal with um, so many different situations. It's also a challenge. It's similar to be on expedition. It's different challenges, but I love it, you know? And it's so cool to see the instant feedback when I'm publishing a story on, uh, for example, in magazines such as National Geographic or Geo Magazine, or when I have my images shown on BBC, then I don't get the feedback. I mean, eventually the film will be shown half a year later and eventually people will say, well, it wasn't too bad. But the good thing about the internet is the reaction. And that's why I love to see your um, comments. So happy Tuesday from Boston, Massachusetts, says Walter. Hello, dear Walter. Uh, Robert says, hello, Ulla. Moin, somebody from Germany in Hamburg, up in the north of Germany. They say, hi, uh, Moin. Ha S E photo says mine. Great. So I know that you're there. So now I would love to go to the images. I have my um, screen, which I'm going to share, and I'm going to show the YouTube images. So here we go. I will share the Safari screen. Please let me know if you don't see the correct one. I hope you see the correct one. I don't have. Here we go. I share again. You see, um, it's here we go. That's the correct one. Yes. So we start with this one. This is one of my very favorite images from the series, from what you posted, because um, Le Van Sto. 92 years old, has this very characteristic face. And I love the light from the side, coming from the side and the light on his beard. I think it's an excellent capture. But what I love about it also is that Mort Four knows his name. He knows the age. He knows some background about um, Le Fansu. 
So to me, I love photographing people, but I'm not somebody who just walks in the street and photographs strangers. To me, the people I photograph, they become friends. So big compliments, not only for this great image, but also for giving background about that person, because that also tells me that you've talked with the person, that you met the person, and that maybe your camera, you use it like I use my camera, I use it like a door opener to the hearts and feelings of people. Well done. Um, we are in the Asia area, so I wanna stay with this one. It's also from Ward 4, um, the monk, family. You know why I picked this one? Because of the great contrasts. The orange pops out really well with this historic um, building, like the shrine in the background. You have the leading lines and it basically takes you into the image. The focus is on the monks, but you see in the background where they are going or where they're looking to. It's like a shrine and it's a door opening. And um, to me, it's, it makes me curious. It makes me curious what they are doing, uh, where they're going. So Cambodia, great, I know this, but uh, mod four, one um, suggestion for you would be to add a little bit more of a story. I'm sure you also met these people or you know where you took the photographs were in Cambodia. Um, I mean, in Angkor Wat, yes, but maybe you know a bit more what they're doing. So maybe add a little bit more of a story to the caption, but the photograph is fantastic. So hope for the future. I also like this shot, but it's not your strongest. Why? There is a little bit of the balloon missing on the top. Um, you have the temple of literature, perfect. But, you know, if I would have seen a tiny bit more of that balloon, I would have been even happier. I don't mind that you crop the feet, but I would love to see a bit more of the balloon. So maybe crop a little bit more of the feet and have this tiny bit of balloon the next time. But I mean, that's already um, critique on a very high level because I love the framing of the shot, the very simple lines. You have the horizon of the wall, and then the flags and these colorful balloons. So great, well done. Um, and I love also your title, Hope for the Future. The floating market, the mom selling the food and the child enjoys the peace and calm. To me, that also works really well. Um, I'm not quite sure if the focus, like if the eyes are completely crisp. To me, that's always a little bit the problem with the internet images. I'm sure on the big screen, they look different. But to me, on the small screen, it looks like the focus would be on the jacket, but I'm not quite sure. Rather than that, perfect capture, great. Amazing framing with the child just looking underneath the arm. Um, I can see what uh, the mother is doing. I can still get the background of the market. It's a wonderful storytelling portrait. To me, a great photograph not only shows the person, but also the action and the emotion. And here you are really in the atmosphere of it. So this is really, really, really well done. Capture the atmosphere, capture the action and the emotions. Very great. Compliments. I have to check out your profile mod four. I did not, I just checked these images, but I think I have to check out your profile. I look forward to more photographs. It looks like you've traveled a lot in Asia. So thanks for this. And uh, this one is also from you, the barber. Um, it's just so cool. It's such a capture in the moment. Um, <laughs> I'm just not sure if the barber should look at the photographer and not at the person he shapes. It looks very dangerous, but that makes it so good. You have the foreground. I love that you kept have a little bit of the door in it. On the other side, the um, towel balances it out nicely. On the background, I see this 
funky door with a barber shaving somebody. I think it's a white person. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's like a famous person in that area. It makes me really curious. And I discover many levels in the photograph, many layers. So to me, this also makes a good image if I can discover more in the image. I'm, something grabs me and it's the look of the barber. Like um, he goes, I don't know the English word, like if one eye goes like this and the other goes like this, um, he does that a little bit. So that already makes me really curious. And then I look, I'm like, oh, he shaves that guy. Why is he looking at me? So, and then I discover also the other images. I discover a lot of things. So um, great, I love it. I really love it. So I quickly stopped my screen sharing because I wanna see in the chat if Mord4 is there. Ah, HSE photo is Norwegian, but he speaks German. Cool, hallo, das ist sehr gut. Dann sage ich guten Tag. <laughs> Robert Hoffman is still there, Superlcar007, the, um, says hello, but I did not get the, um, Walter van Dusen, is that Walter? No, Mord4, okay. So Mord4, you're not here, but you sent in some great images and maybe you'll get a chance to watch the chat afterwards because I also, have seen the Peruvian girl, which is this one. What do you guys think about this photograph? I love it. I really think the cords, like the cotton thread draws the attention to the girl. The girl is in the center. Um, I would love to see the non Instagram crop of this because I think um, the non-Instagram crop is a bit different. The square for the Instagram, I would have maybe put it a bit more to the left, so to see a bit more of the cotton. But I think um, the original picture goes more to the right because the writing from Morton 4 is cut off. So maybe then there are some lines like this going onto the girl, but I don't know. So I can't say about the crop. Um, but I can say about the light on the cotton, I can talk about the girl looking a certain way, and I can say it makes a really, really, really great capturing image because of the colors, because of the dark background, which does not grab the attention and of the leading lines, which actually leads you to the girl. Another great image. So now we have a different photographer, Dewey Sign. And Dewey Sign has a fantastic image from Corsica, Bonifacio, and a very colorful evening. You know, first I'm like, is that Photoshop? But you can see that Dewey Sign worked with filters because the ocean is very flat, very smooth. So I assume that you have used um, a filter to kind of smooth out the ocean and the long exposure. And um, you wrote a really nice um, description about it. That's what I love a lot. For National Geographic, I, um, I'm allowed to post on the National Geographic Adventure channel Instagram account. I post in Germany on a Terra X account and they're all scientific accounts and they work with great images, but also they add a science angle to it. And for you, to me, um, this is like what a great caption should be. You are giving, lit, um, you're not only giving information about your photograph, you're not just describing what's in the photograph, but you give us additional information so we can feel how it is to be there. Um, it's almost poetic. It's um, capo pertusato, which is in the Corsican language, which in the Corsican language means a perforate, perforated ledge, is surrounded by coves and a rocky outcrop pierced by the force of the sea. 
just in harmony with the position of the moon. My fantasy plays a nice mental cinema every time I look at this bizarre rock formation. Maybe that happens with you too. How cool is that? Yes, my fantasy plays many, many tricks. It leads me to many, many different weird thoughts, but it's good. And I love that you also ask a question. So big compliments, not only for this amazing capture with these wonderful colors, the nice work with the filters, the nice work with the foreground, with the leading lines, but also the writing of the captions. Great, well done. And I will give you a very big like and some clapping hands. This is really cool image. Yes, post. <laughs> I look forward to seeing more of your images, Dewey Sign. But we have another one from Mod 4. Happiness in Cuba. Wow, you're traveling a lot. And I love your images from all around the world. They all have a, a, a similar style to it. This is something what can only be achieved when you advance your photography. But if you look at the images from Mod 4, the ones he shared with us, a lot of them have colors popping out. And this also works with the contrasts. Remember the monks with the dark backgrounds? This lives from the yellow and the blue. It's called complementary contrast. And I work a lot with contrasts in my work because there is nothing nicer on a dull day than to photograph colors, contrasts or on a bright sunshine day in the shadows to photograph colors and contrasts. So well done for this happiness and for this image from Cuba. We have another one from Mord 4 from a normal day in Havana. Nice people, amazing buildings, lots of different types of smells, colors. Love it. I love your shot. Um, Describe more of these smells. I can see the colors, but how is the smell? Is it a smell that stinks in the nose? Is it a fragrant smell? Is it a smell of hot asphalt being heated by the sun? For us photographers, it's always really, really hard because we can't photograph smells. But smell is so important. Noises are so important. How does it sound to be there? Is there a lot of traffic? Is it like a bee hive with so much traffic? Or is it, despite being in a city, calm? Are there only occasional uh, Vespas driving by? Or are there these big Cuban cars with a lot of roaring motors? Describe that. And um, it's a very classic shot as Cisnis Nasara says. It's correct, but it's a lovely shot. And don't underestimate these classic shots. They usually work well if you photograph them in a different way. Maybe it would have also made a nice shot. Do you see this puddle of water on the left side corner? Maybe it could have been a different type of image to look closely at that puddle of water and photograph the reflection from the building. Why not? Why not try something different? So when I'm at known locations, I first photograph the classic shots, but then I always photograph also a creative shot. I look for a different angle. I look for a different way of seeing things. One of my best selling pictures from the Eiffel Tower, I'm also with National Geographic, it's my stock agency, so they sell images from me. But one image from the Eiffel Tower, my best selling ones, it's not a classic shot of the Eiffel Tower with nice light at night, no. It's a shot of statues in front of the Eiffel Tower and the Eiffel Tower being really blurry in the background. Okay, I quickly stop this. Now you see me in big again and I go to your comments. Oh, here you go. Just tagged a few of my images, says Walter. Great, Walter. So then I have to refresh and I love seeing your work. Um, Robert Hoffman says, that's an amazing one. Yes, I agree. Uh, Nina had um, to choose three photographs and photographs she wanted 
feedback on. Yeah, that's a very good one because feedback is important. And um, I go back to the images to give you more feedback real quickly. If we get more images, I might be, have to be quicker going through them. Nine narrow. Here we go. Talking to me on the mobile. Why not? It's so cool to be um, the observer, to be behind that person. I love the bouquet. Um, that's the kind of uh, small, unsharp circles in the background. I love the face of the person talking to the other one. I think it's really, really cool. To me, the action happens on the phone. So I would have cropped in a bit more just on the person with the camera. I would have been, um, I would have lose a little bit of the surroundings. Um, I tried to make a crop for you guys. Not quite sure if you can see what I do if it's in the screen sharing. But you know, Instagram with the squares, sometimes it's hard for me as a photographer to crop a square. But with this image, a square would actually work well because you can focus more on the action with the person. And um, I try to share the correct screen. Um, I now share my desktop. So you see the small image which I cropped. So see, this is basically what I would love the image to look like. I focus more on that person and I don't lose any of the nice bouquet. I don't lose the background and the kind of robustness of that guy, but I think a crop would work a bit better. Don't hesitate to crop your images. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, but don't crop them too much. Don't lose your original idea of the image. Epsilon, Olva Press. I have a lot of imagination when I look at this image. I spend a lot of time, I did spend a lot of time figuring it out what it is. The image, I can see it. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Hello. Yes, you were uh, something was cutting off. My internet connection is completely um, is like the fastest I've ever got. So I'm back now. Okay, cool. I can continue my talking. Good. Then I go back in screen sharing. So here I'm back. And this is the abstract image again. Um, abstract images make me curious. They are decoration and they are interpretation of a few of the world. So all of them, very well done. I want to see this image on my wall. Cool. I love it. Even if I don't really know what it is. I think it's electricity lines. From Cuba, again, taken through a car window. I love the framing. This is what I talked about in the other image. It's a known, um, uh, a known image idea, the face of, um, like the face on the wall, but taken through the car, it makes a complete different image. So um, well done for this. Amazing people in amazing Cuba. You were describing your person in uh, Vietnam really well with a name, with the age. I want to know more about that person. I want to know who that is, why he's smiling, who is he waving at. I love the shot. 
but I'm just curious. That's just me. But rather than that, you see how the image works with the two sides of it. There is light on one side and no light on the um, no light on the other, and the line goes exactly diagonal through the image. Great, well done. Hello, Thomas? Thomas, am I online? What's happening? Okay. Yeah, I um, switched network just in case it was happening on my side, but um, like I have, a, I checked and I have a really stable connection, but that's fine. We get there. So I'm back on the talk and I can go back to the builder critic. Is that correct? Right. Here we go again. So great shot, mod four. I will take out your work afterwards. I will go back on the internet and check out your work because I love it. Now we're in India. They didn't ask for nothing. They just wanted to have the picture taken. Yeah. and um, each other. Um, gay traveling, the named, um, but rather than that, it's a great shot. Actually, I get to know more about that through your image because I can see the rickshaws in the background and I can make my own story so that's already one really cool thing but um, often images speak more than a lot of words but still some a little bit of additional information for all your images would help to add another level but to your photography I don't have to say anything it's on a very very great level also your black and white work. I was saying that I love your colors, but I also love your black and white work. So now we are on a DV sign again, a tree with a name, Elbsandsteingebirge Sachsen. This is in Germany. <laughs> and this is one of the descriptions. Again, it's in German, but it's one of the descriptions where I can really say what a great example great description because the design is with uh, the dark to uh, through that at Sandsteinberg it's an area really known for these towering uh, rocks and he's writing that he wanted to stop the hamster wheel and um, he's on the road but um, in the morning, there are a lot of people at the famous rocks. But this one is not famous. 
it's just a tree. I mean, it's a pelkin kiefer, he says, and for him, the sign of survival because the tree is inside a rock and um, it's, um, you know, maybe a very old tree. He's named after famous um, photographer, Fritz Pölking. And um, he was working already last um, uh, hundred years ago to make that tree, put that tree in scene. So um, now it would not be possible because now there are a lot more people walking and uh, using that area. But um, DB Sein was able to have a moment with this Perkin Kiefer by himself and he loved it. That is the description of the text. It's an adventure report. It's an adventure journey. So I feel also with him, I'm like, okay, I walk my dog and I want to spend time with this and I can picture that not only Debut Sein was working really well to put this tree in frame, but also I go back so many centuries to that famous, uh, so many years to that famous photographer. So well done for the description, but of course also for this wonderful image. I assume that you were using filters because you was mentioning castle filters. Uh, it's a great show showcase what to do with filters, how to use them correctly. I assume he uh, was using a filter to darker in the sky and also to emphasize the colors. Great after work in Photoshop as well, but not too much, or in Lightroom, but not too much work. I love that you can see the details in the rocks, but the rocks still keep their original color. They're not too shiny, they still look dark. So wonderful, great, more. <laughs> more four with a barber shop in India. Um, I could actually need not to stand in line. Now I get my start. Now I get you start to see your humor through the image and I can see it through your description. So cool, more like this. The next one is uh, this guy making you for dinner as much in India. The food was always delicious and this guy made it even better. Yes. Um, I love that the food. Um, cool. Why not? We have the guy sticking the inside the camera a bit like this so you get the idea that um, it could be a bit more like this three-dimensional but um, the choosing of the focus makes it already um, three-dimensional because the focus is on the foot oops Olive, Olive Bretzen, you don't take a photograph, you make it. Anson Adams. Yes, you make a great photograph, but it's a very well staged photograph. The autumn colors, the autumn leaves, um, cool. It uh, puts me already in the autumn mood, but here where we are, it's lucky, still sunny, and still warm, and still but um, your image just talks autumn to me. I would probably ask you about the original image because I think, um, I mean, I get the idea that you are cropping so the girl is completely in the center of the image. It works. But I love the bouquets, like the unsharp circles on the left side. So I'm wondering if the original image is a bit wider. And maybe you can shift it a bit more to the left where you have the bouquet circles and you have this nice line of the leaves. Just an idea, but I don't know. For me, the image works great like it is, perfect. But um, if I see the original image, maybe I would have a different idea of the crop. And I love that you put the quote from Anton Adams. Very well done. Next image is from D.B. Sign again with a thirsty elephant. This beautiful northern Spanish archway made rocks 
of rocks seem to hover over the roaring sea despite all the forces. Its nets were stretched in the arch and the tide simply drove the fish in. Great, great, great. Read through the comments. It's very, very, very cool. And um, nice countryside, nice uh, colors. Again, great use of filters. Um, nature to its best, Spain to its best. And get more followers. I mean, you are actually already tagging. If you go through the hashtags from DBSign, it's already um, great names. But what, um, what's also good that you are adding um, tourism boards like Spain or Naturaleza Spain, Splendid Earth, um, like uh, it's not one of them, but um, if you say at tourism, Spain or at Viva España in Spain is often if you have great landscape photographs like this the, the tourism boards they are going to repost your images because they have all interest and if you just use hashtag to get them see, to make them see your images they often don't see it but if you use at for example at Naturaleza Spain then they find the image in their feed and then it's hard to ignore. So make sure you say at um, BBC or at National Geographic if you have an image which you think is something for them. If it's only your second best image, don't bother. But if it's one of the really good images, make sure you tag the appropriate people. Okay, where are we? Um, I am just quickly checking for my iPhone connection because we had some trouble with the internet and I was wondering if it's better from my iPhone, but the battery is getting a bit empty. Quickly cable and I leave you for a second with the image of more This image from Varasani, India with the holy river of Ganges to me, um, it's a very touching image because it shows the cremated along the Holy Ganges River. Um, but I definitely, definitely. It makes me so curious to get to know the whole story behind it. It's just a teaser for me. This image, it's so up, like, it shows me but I don't see. So this is a great shot to get me attached to the story, to grab my attention. I'm really curious to know the background, the whole story behind it. So very well done. Um, more. Why not do a whole story about this? Why not do a whole reportage about this? If you have access to an area like this, please use it. Don't only go there and shoot once go to the same locations back and um, back again and make sure that you meet the people, make sure that you um, get to know them, make sure that they trust in you. And then eventually you will be able to actually go a whole day with these people. Okay, next one. I love your work mode for really. Next one is from a different photographer, Jaron Martin. Your light will terrify the dark. What a poetic C100. Um, it's analog film. It's done with really real film with Canon 7. How wonderful. So it's a very different style of image. It's artistic. It's um, a ritual. It's um, a lomography is actually a different style of taking pictures. So be different than others. And uh, you know, I've seen many pictures from people from behind, but this one, um, I don't know why, but it grabs my attention. So if you have a specific 
thing like this, which stands out, which you think is worth showing, show it. You will always find people who will wonder about the image. I mean, I wonder about this image. I wonder where the girl is going to. I wonder um, what the girl is thinking. And the light is so nice on that image. And um, it just, I have a lot of associations with that image. And to me, this is also a great way Um, working with photography to have people in that. Um, so, wow, more like this. And if I see this, stop it real quick. I go back to my big screen and I say the next in line. I have to read my Instagram because some people were posting some more with the um, building with Ola hashtag um here we go um a great well composed image but um often they are not the um, ones which touch but why does it touch my heart? Sometimes you cannot explain, but um, I think this makes it all a picture touches your heart. I'm a jury member, um, which are nicely composed and show the nature as it is. They are not the images. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hello. Thomas? Hello, Thomas. You can't see my video. Hmm. Um, uh, so I'm not here. I switched, I switched the network. It's not my net. I'm switching the network again. I have a very good connection network with my phone and network without the phone. So um, can you see it again now? Am I back? Okay, cool. I'm trying with two different networks and both networks work fine. So um, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm back, okay? Everybody can hear me. Yippee! <laughs> so um, I go back to the hashtag. Um, here we are, yes. The next image is this, and I will go back into screen sharing with this image from Hilde Jordbrunn scenery. This church, I was baptized and had my confirmation. Here are my ancestors buried, and here did my parents marry. 
this is the type of personal story which attaches me to an image more than if I would just see the image. The image itself, it's really nice. I love the contrast with the blue colors and the blue colors of the sky and of the flowers. I love the white church. But to me, the person's story makes it so personal. And this is what I said. Some images make me ring because there is a personal connection either of me when I see the image or of the photo photographer. Why is it important that you photograph? So Hilde Jordbrunn, great that you show us this nice place. And I have one from Olaf from Stellenbosch in South Africa. I have been there too. And it's such a beautiful place to photograph. Um, the light, light is very nice on the background and I love the graphic lines. The only thing, um, it would have been even nicer if the person who hikes would be on the rim or um, in the sun. So then he would pop out even a little bit more. I mean, he stands where the rock is, so already on a lighter part of it. But I think what would add this little bit of extra if he would be a bit up higher. I know this is not easy to do because when you're photographing, then um, often you can't just say to the person, go up, maybe the road goes down. I assume the road goes down. But I photograph a lot in the mountains where I anticipate my shots. So I run before everybody and I place myself where I think the people will go next. Um, so just an idea if you feel like running through the mountains. But rather than that, the shot works really well. And uh, congratulations for taking great images whilst tracking, because as I said, this is not easy at all. You have to hike and take great shots like this. Only blueberries from Guard go to Plas. It's a series of images of rock climbing images of great rock climbing images. And I looked at them the first time rock climbing in Slovakia. So I was in Slovakia and I looked at these images. I said, oh, this is so cool. I want to go there. Especially this image makes me like I'm with that person. I'm part of the story. I'm holding the rope myself. The blurry foreground leads me to the person on top. And um, this one, I love the expression. It's like, okay, only blueberries. What do we do? And um, it's a little series. And uh, it tells me the whole story. And I love seeing the face as well. It's just like, okay. So without a lot of words, I can get the story, I can read it. And um, I love the um, set of three images as well. So great, nothing to add, no improvements. I mean, if you want, you can write a bit more of the rock climbing on that day, of course, but also the images speak for themselves. This is different to the landscape shots or to the shots of people when you have landscape then um, the description adds a lot of depth depth when you have people you will get um, to know a lot about the people when you add their story but for action shots like this to me the images speak more or less from themselves and this is what great images should do they should speak for themselves another one from god guard go to plus you have great eyes <laughs> You have really great eyes, honestly. This image, I love the shot with the great eyes. And also on the other one, you put a lot of focus on photographing the people, the expressions. And um, this is what, is what makes this photo alive. I mean, I see where it is. I see what you guys are doing. You're going up the mountains with a gondola. But if it would not be for this look, the image would not work. But because of that look, because of background and especially of the expression, it works really well. Nine narrow, misty morning. This um, is another one which is very abstract, very minimalistic and uh, would be a great one for my wall. 
it's um, with the reflections of the trees with the clouds it's a very great example of what you can do also on a cloudy day a lot of photographers do not leave when the weather is not nice when you don't have a sunrise when you don't have a sunset but also the cloudy days make great images like this a very nice encouragement to go out also on cloudy days i can't see the post work really well on that shot i think there is a little bit more what you can do to get that island a bit more isolated from the background maybe just lighten the background a tiny bit or lighten the foreground a tiny bit so you have a bit more of a contrast between the foreground and the background of that island and of that um, forest i would probably lighten up the island in the foreground a little bit just a little thought but again i can't tell it only from looking at the instagram low resolution file very 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 well done Oslo Opera House. Cool. This is as graphic as it is in the nature. So you have also a certain style as we had with the first photographer, the style of traveling images. You have a style of architectural, architectural images also in nature. The only thing with architectural photography, if you have lines, keep them straight. And here, I think it's a little bit um, going on the left side, at least visually. Sometimes the image might be completely straight, but visually it goes a little bit, it, uh, it has a little slope to it. I think this is exactly an example like this, where the image visually has a little slope, but technically not. I would just at 0.1 degree to the right. So the image looks a bit straight and I would use the line of the building. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but here the line of this building, I would use this as the leading line. Just a thought. Rather than that, white, white, white and blue with the blue sky. I love also that you have the contrast and the harsh light. Great example what you can also do on a bright sunny day. You don't only have to take pictures when the sun is bright or when the sun is low. Uh, when the sun is um, too harsh, you can also take images and you can also take images when you have cloudy days. I don't have the biggest portfolio yet as I picked up this hobby this year. I always wanted to do photography, but I did not buy a camera before this year. Honestly, if I would take images like this on my first year when I took photographs, I would be very proud. And Staff Dial, I think you can be very proud about the first image. I love the texture and I also love your second one because also the black and white makes it very vivid, makes it very much, um, it emphasizes the Asian one. Um, and this, without knowing that it would be from this car, I wouldn't know what it is. So um, now I know what it is and it makes me smile because I can see the nature taking over this car. Um, great use of the images and um, nothing to add on this. The only thing if you show a series of images like this, I think to get a bit more consistency, I would have all three of them in color and have the black and white one as a separate, just um, on your Instagram feed, um, you know, because it makes it more um, uni unique, uh, more uniform if you have one certain style. So these kind of nature colors all go really well together. And this black and white stands out a little bit. So I would probably just make this an extra post and keep the two together with the colors. Or maybe have this in the post also in color just to show a bit more consistency in your portfolio. Don't worry about buying a macro lens for these photographs. Um, with a tailor lens, you can uh, usually do a lot as well as you've shown. And please continue to take great pictures like this. Big congratulations. For Johnson Media, 
Um, the pro division back in 2019 from Bronhold Dynamite from paintballing. I don't understand a lot about this sport, but on this image, I can understand a lot about the sport because I see that there are paintballs, like you have the paint of the fa on the of the colors on the right side. I can see the gun. I can see the person being in the protection thing. So even if I don't know a lot about the sport, this one tells me more about it. So that's what I really like. It's a storytelling portrait. Um, I can't see emotions of that person, which I always love to see, but it's just the way it is with the face and the guard. So the image, the concentration, it speaks to me. I can see the concentration through the image. So I don't have to see the face to get um, him being like ready to shoot and to get the story. Very well done. Thanks for that. Hilde Jörgbrunn scenery, Vagavanet. I wanna be there. I want to be there right now and lay on the shore of that lake. Great landscape image because it invites me. The lines, the foreground, it leads me to look through the lake and look at the reflection. The only thing is I would crop a bit from the left because there is a tiny bit of a house. So just crop a little bit more from the side and um, either from the foreground or from the background, from the uh, top to keep the dimensions. When I crop images, I always keep dimensions because then it makes it also look uniform. You have heard me talking about the uniformity and that the images should have a similar look and feel to it. This is also in the format. It's important that you keep a consistency. Walter van Dusen, Street Portrait, Oslo, Norway, 2017. Wow, 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 wow. Um, this gentleman walked by me and requested to capture his portrait. He was from Russia and loves living in Norway. Cool. Very, 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 very nice. I love the look. Um, just ask his name. I want to know his name. I want to meet him as well. Uh, that's the only thing. But rather than that, um, I love it. I'm just uh, wondering how you got the blurry background. It looks to me that you could have maybe used a bit Photoshop. And uh, the next time, instead of using Photoshop, so why not put or a filter? So why not put the person a bit away from the background and use an open aperture such as 2.8? And then also the rest of the rocks would be also blurry. But, you know, in a moment like this, anything works because this is a moment you just have to capture and you did it really, really well. Robert Hoffman, the Baltic Sea and English Longhorns. How cool. I would brighten the foreground a tiny bit, but then I also love the mood of your images at sunset. You know, they all have a certain mood. And... Even if I would say maybe brighten this up a tiny, tiny bit, I would not destroy this sunset look of it. You know, a lot of the images are almost like HDR. They are too light, bright of the foreground. It is like it is. And I love these images because they also work together really well with that darkness. And um, well done, great. I want to be there and I also want to photograph the longhorns. Iceland waterfall. Please, I want to go. I want to see the Soka Foss myself. Um, great with the long exposure, great with the lines and the water. Maybe being, I would have probably put my tripod in the river, but then I would not have captured the rocks in the foreground. I love the sand. So even if it's not a shot, like I would take it because I would play more with the water and the blurry water also from the river in the foreground. I love it because it's different. Everybody would put the tripod in the water, but you put it on the sand. So we see the texture of the sand. Great. 
do it different and uh, be different. Um, Senja sunset over the um, Husjef, Husfjellet. Wow. Um, cool. Please, please, please more images like this because I can really see the light. If somebody sees the light, photography is like painting with light. This is what I always think. It's a great photograph. It's not only see the location, but also see the light. And the way the clouds are lighting up, I love it. Um, the snow fields and the foreground, I think it's great. I would probably look to have a little bit more of that snow field. If it is, just choose a little bit more of a wider angle because I'm curious about the snow, but um, that's just me. I don't know if something is in the foreground, but um, I love the frame as it is and the crop or the um, Instagram square as well. It's not often that I say this format Instagram works well because I'm a landscape photographer. To me, the images have to be like this, but here on the other image before it has worked really well. Before the storm, photo by Kios, cool. I love the turquoise water, the black clouds of the storm and the green of the grass. And it works well with the yellow. I have to quickly check how many images I still want to go through, not that many more. So maybe you allow me to do five minutes longer than I can check the last images because um, I think you just um, um, added it. Yes, no, I all good. So I was a little bit over because I had a little bit of internet access charges, but that's fine. So I hope I get a couple more minutes. I want to show you photographs and I want to say something about that one. A macro photograph is always really hard to take because often you see only insects or only flowers, but you don't see action. And here I see that the bee is drinking from the flower. I love to see um, capturing photographs to either they should be structural in macro photography, they should be simplified or they should show action. And to me, this one definitely shows a really nice action in a beautiful light. HSE Photo Welder. We have one from you also from Hellerud. So um, you don't do only macro, but you also do great landscape shots of a busy world out there. Trees from a bridge, a blurry motion. Well done. Very interesting. It's not the typical nature shot. It shows that we are also part of the nature. Um, this is also one where you think is that straight? Because it goes uphill a little bit. Um, it is the way it is. I don't think uh, you should crop it any differently or you should straighten the horizon any differently, but I would just crop it a tiny, tiny bit, either to lose more of that tree on the right side, or maybe it's in the frame, maybe it's a bit more of that tree, because then it could balance the tree on the left out with the tree on the right. But just have a little bit of the tree, I think it disturbs me either a tiny bit more or a little bit less. But rather than this, well done. Also the shot from Collet's Gate, it's a very simple black and white photography shot, but through the simplicity it works well because it focuses on the lines. It's almost one of these old um, could be one of these very old photographs. Um, it has something, a moment in time to it. That's why I like it a lot. So thanks very, very much for showing it, HSE Photo. Thank you guys for showing me your photographs. I enjoyed very, very much seeing them. And if you want, um, if you have more for me, Feel free to use the hashtag I'll be following for the next one or two days. 
um, I'll be following the hashtag. So if you have any color or any comments for me, please feel free to ask or um, send them to me. I um, can see that um, Walter enjoyed the critique and the ginger world traveler is Walter. I will check and thank you all for being there as well and for showing us the nice bridge in the city of Dramen. Wow. <laughs> Robert is asking if I'm near a coffee machine again. Not this time, dear Robert. <laughs> um, my internet works well for a change. Um, Olf said, um, please send me the copy of the original later. I'm here. You can also send me feedback on uh, your images on my email i just posted my email so if you have any more ones you want me to look at feel free to send me for the next one or two days i definitely check the emails and make sure that uh, i look at them you can also post them on my instagram tagging me and also canon nordic and photo no nordic and photo uh, photo no dot no oh, and oh so when you tag us then we definitely make sure that we look at the images again and maybe some are getting reposted we like i would love to feature some of your images on my in my stories because they are really 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 nice um my images are all from the side of the main subject plus movement, hope that they are seen. Dear Walter, um, I did not see your images. Did you use the hashtag? I'm not quite sure because um, I just make a refresh and I did not see your images. So I'm sorry if your images were not amongst them, but please feel free to post them in your story and tag me because then I can look at them the easiest way. I hope it was informative. I hope that you liked it. And I hope that I hear from you again soon. Thank you very, very much and all the best to you. Bye bye.